Thank you for joining back again. The objective of this class is to install Linux environment in our Windows. If you are already using a Linux box, you don't have to do this setup. You can skip this video. However, if you are using a Windows machine like me and you want to still practice Linux commands, then you can do this setup. However, there are some options where you can practice Unix or Linux commands without doing the Linux setup. One such option is you have a website called linuxju.net which has an option where you can sign in where you can sign in and that will give you a VM to practice. This is not only the option, if you do a quick googling you will find out and number of other options too. Just in case if you wanted to do the setup in your Windows laptop, you need three different products. The first one is VMware product. The VMware can be downloaded downloadable for 30 days under free license. Of course you can buy it after that. So I downloaded VMware Workstation 11 for Windows. Then I have downloaded Red Hat Linux from Red Hat side. Then I have downloaded putty.exe, sorry it's putty dot, yeah, putty.exe which is a free SSH and Telnet client using which I can connect to this Red Hat Linux box from my Windows environment. And I have downloaded all of them into a single folder called software. Now I will be starting my first installation called VMware installation and I am right clicking it and running as an administrator. Now this is going to install VMware in my laptop and it's going to ask a couple of questions and I'm going to accept this license and I'm going for typical installation, the default environment. I'm not checking for, uh, for the product updates. Let it create desktop icons. Please note that I'm using Windows 7 which is the same process on Windows 8 too. Now it started doing the installation. So this is going to take some time. Once this VM completes, we log into this VM workstation. Then we'll create a Linux virtual machine using this ISO file I have downloaded. Well, you have to do Red Hat Linux ISO only? I say no, you have various other options. If you cannot go and buy Red Hat Linux, you can go ahead and buy or, or really download this Ubuntu or Mint Linux, whatever that is, and still the interfaces are same. It depends upon what kind of an ISO image you have. Whether it is 32-bit or 64-bit, I say please go ahead for 64-bit because that's what most of the servers in our work environment are like. That. Most of our work environment servers use 64-bit operating systems. So I prefer 64-bit. So that's why I downloaded 64-bit uh, Linux server. So for this to install, I don't want to partition my Windows box. So that's why I downloaded a VMware. Okay. Then I'm installing this Red Hat Linux on this VMware. Let the VMware complete first. Thank you for being patient. You know, this is going to take some time. Okay. So let the VMware complete. It might it, it might take like four or five minutes. Once your VMware completes installation, you will receive a message like this. Click on finish. Okay. Then go to start window and just type VMware and click on this VMware workstation that you will get it here. This is how your front interface when you open VMware. Now our next option is to go ahead 
and create a new virtual machine. Okay. Now what I do here is let me copy this path and click on a create new virtual machine. Okay. Click on next. I'll go for a typical uh, installation, a typical creation only. So here you have to select your RHL ISO. Three options installer disk, image. I will install operating system later. Select installer disk image file, which by default picking up uh, from my previous location, but you can give the respective location here and you can select the ISO and click on open. Then you can go for next. So if you go back, it says that Red Hat Linux 64-bit is detected. Click on next. I say my name. I give my user ID as Ravi and password as password. Password as password. Please note that this password is same for Linux super user. Like Windows has administrator as a super user. Linux has root as a super user. Along with root, it also helps you it also helps you to create this new user ID. So I can log in as a Ravi or a root once my user account or our Linux got created. Okay, make sure you remember this password. Click on next. So I'll give virtual mission name as um, RHL um, maybe uh, practice one. It doesn't matter. Okay, anything or Unix or Linux basics or anything, you know. Let's say Linux one for simplicity. Right. Now it is asking me to select some disk space. 20 GB is very big size, very good enough size for, for our practice we do. 20 GB and I'm going to create it as a single file only. That means it's going to create a 20 GB file system, single file system. Once you do this, <coughs> you will uh, receive an option to finish it. Just click on finish. It is by default going to pick up 2 GB of RAM. But of course you can change that RAM later. Now it will start the installation and this whole process is going to take 10 to 15 minutes of time. Okay. I don't know you might have heard that Linux installation is a little complicated but once you look at this process it's very easy installation. Okay. But one common issue you might face here is Intel VTX is not supported kind of an error. What that means is you don't have virtualization feature enabled at your BIOS settings. If you get that error, please log into your BIOS settings. Google can help you down there. You know, when you are restarting your laptop or a desktop, depends, depending upon your motherboard, you have a keys like F10, F11, or F2, or F3. Once you press that, you'll go to BIOS settings. In the BIOS settings, one option is I think under security or somewhere you can see the option to virtualization. So make sure you enable it or check mark it depends upon your uh, maker, you know, laptop maker or motherboard you use. So you know once you get once you receive that error, please Google it and you'll see n number of solutions for it. Other than that, it's a very straightforward installation. Okay. Now if I do a quick recap, we downloaded the products VMware, Linux and putty. Now from where you can download putty is putty.org. You can uh, click on here and you can download this putty.ems. Okay, just a simple like in a KBS file. Okay. So your installation Red Hat Linux installation is checking for it. It is uh, 
about to start the installation process. There are close to 938 packages it is going to install as part of this Red Hat Linux installation. Okay. Now that's going to take some time so that uh, it, it's going to take like close to 10, 10 minutes or so. So instead of we waiting in that uh, video, I'll pause the moon, pause the video for some time. And when it is about to finish it up, I'll re-enable the video. So look at this, there are like 938 packages it's going to install. Now it is installing package number 5, 6, like that it is going to install all 938, okay. If you look at now, we are almost halfway through the installation. It's so far installed 440 packages. If you notice it, if you notice it at the bottom, you can see change disk. This ISO file is a single file, so you don't have to do anything on this change disk here. But once in a while, a Linux image might span across a couple of disks. So once it installs all the packages and a single disk, it will ask you for the new disk. So that's when actually you have to click on change disk and you have to give the second ISO file location. Okay. But for this installation that I am doing, I don't have to do any change disk because it's just all part of a single ISO file. We are doing pretty good so far with the installation. So far 802 packages have been installed. 802, 10, 816, 18. It's been going at a pretty good speed. What happens is once it installs all 938 packages, it will reboot automatically. Okay. It will reboot automatically. 